God our Father, as we gather during this week when we celebrate the independence of our nation, a time when we truly come together to remember, to look at our founding fathers, the goals that they had, and for us who have responsibilities to plan for our future, we pray for the guidance and the direction that we may have their wisdom, that we may have their courage, and may have their foresight. Help us to truly be <clears throat> conscious of the needs of our neighbor and the direction which you, our God and Father, would have us go. Fill us with the spirit of courage, but especially with the grace to make the decisions that are truly part of your decision. For each and every one of the people that we serve, we ask your blessing as we ask your blessing upon us. And to this prayer and all prayers, we say, Amen. They tried really hard at Marvies to get them to just send the wiring harness so they can put it in, but Ford wouldn't or Dodge wouldn't let them do that. And they said 30 days. So I don't know if it went there on train, bus, what. But it was all three of them. It wasn't it was staffers and sheriff's departments. And uh, so it came and, and went the same thing. Wow. Don't buy a Dodge next time? He said, don't buy a dog next time. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? All right. Um, then at this point, I would entertain a motion to go into executive session for five minutes to include council, mayor, superintendent. I'll make a motion for a five minute executive session. Fireworks in the street to please pick up all the trash 
from that when they get done. So just makes a lot neater and it just keeps them getting the form drain and stuff like that. So it, please do that, it'd be great. That's all. How close are we on the metric? Yeah. Uh, probably looking at uh, the 18 somewhere in through there, probably doing an initial start up. Uh, people from Lane Christian supposed to be here, supposed to get us all in. 15, so we're, we're getting close. Did we get the results from the last test? Just got them in. Westwell was 10. That was the highest we had. So if they hire, we'd have to send out notices, but it was a 10. Okay, that's all I have. Um, I don't really have anything except um, my hard drive did crash yesterday, so it's been replaced and I'm still trying to get a few things um, back organized on my computer but um, <clears throat> through that process we found that um, our, our PCs are not totally backing up every night to the server. The server is backing up so all the, the um, software uh, data that we do to run our utilities and, and our bookkeeping and everything is there. Um, but some of the documents that we have on our own computers that aren't on the shared drive are not as well as our Outlook with all our emails and stuff. So there is a software available, I think he said, around $90 per PC um, that will take care of that and make sure that backs up every night. So that's probably what we're going to do just to ensure the next time, if it ever happens again, if he would have had that um, yesterday, he could have walked in, switched him out, and dumped all that right back on, <clears throat> and my downtime would have been quite a bit less. So, Who does all that? Randy Clark. Uh, He's good. Um, it is under my spending limit, but I did want to inform you that we had that going on. So, Other than that, just do a budget and trying to get things ready to go for you guys to see and look at getting something published and How many PCs do you have? We have three. Thank you. We have this old one over here that we use if anybody would like to come in and be able to look for a job or something like that that is not connected to any of our network. Or if they want to make a credit card payment over the internet for the utility bill or their court fees or something, they can use that to do it, and then we don't we're not responsible for actually doing their payment for them. Okay, new business, bulk water rate. This is the current ordinance. You guys raised it in August of 2010. So this is when we initially established the rate. There was one earlier that was really low, wasn't it? Yeah. So currently, we're fifteen thousand for the for fifteen dollars for the first three thousand gallons, and then four dollars per thousand after that. Mm -hmm. Which is actually less than a residential. No. What's the same? We figured if it cost what per gallon or for 3,000 gallon if it has to be treated? Well, uh, Bobby had that 20, was it 12 cents? 27 cents. to a meter and business, residential and business charge, but we haven't raised this. We yeah, raised this raised before we raised the uh, the other 
and this isn't quite as high as what we raised the residential to. Because you're getting three thousand gallon for the first fifteen dollars, which is five dollars a thousand. And on the city clerk's list, sir, it's across the board. Some are lower and some are way up. Well, we can take this to thirty and eight. Can we double it? I can't see why you wouldn't. You couldn't. Is that outrageous for businesses? Well, you can get it. $3 it costs. I'm sorry, it's scattered all over. Twelve cents a gallon. It's if you put some of them, got a quarter machine. You get. I can't remember what it is. A dollar and a quarter gets you three hundred gallon. I think. What is it over staff? Is it on that? On that boat. That's a dollar gets you. I know they were uh, looking at it as well, though, because they had transports coming in and yeah. filling up over there. And <clears throat> just Do we have a meter on that, Bill? No. no. It's on our system. Right. But that would, that would be tell you right away if you put a four-inch meter on there or flow meter. Right. If the honor system is right, without spinning over a thousand bucks. Low meter? Yeah, well, it's probably more than a thousand bucks for a good one. Oh, yeah. I mean, it still might be worth it. But then mm -hmm. once you find out that it's, you're not, then what do you do? You're going to spend some money on it. I did, uh, excuse me, I did get the numbers on the. Uh, I'm not worried about it until we have to start treating water. <clears throat> if you have to treat water, Combined salt. Got a problem. Well, she's saying that it's basically 12 something if we're treating yeah. our cost on that water. So I think we at least ought to be at 25. Hmm. I agree. Just a flat twenty-five for the first three thousand, or a flat twenty-five for thirty-three hundred gallons. Actually, I'm leaving leave an even number. I mean, I know that this is up in the tanker, but I mean, easier figure anyway. Prepaid card they can buy here. You know, get here and they can go ahead and use that. But if you use a straight credit card, it's $18,000. The prepaid card would be on it. Just a regular credit card is $18,000. If you go with a prepaid card and you get like 50 keys with that, in other words, we have 50 customers and they get a prepaid card, deal with it, it's $13,000. And they didn't recommend the quarter year at all. That'd be just a such a nuisance. Uh, I think that I don't think the honor system is, I don't know, I didn't see anybody not writing the bill. So that's really I don't know who the all loads them. I know the county loads are there and some other tank truck. Right. Falls the old field. Everyone wants to just have somebody come through and get some of us doing a job somewhere. So. But, I mean, yeah, I mean, what Kevin said is true. I mean, if you wanted to put a, there's a meter down there, but it's not, that's for the well itself, and it is, what we sell out there doesn't go through that meter, so. Well, charge, charge, would take it to $25 for the first 3000 and uh, $6 or $8, whatever, $6 for the, every thousand after. 
I think what we need to do is draw up a new ordinance and then you can approve the ordinance. Okay. Why wouldn't you want to go with just so much thousand? We could. Break it back and come up with your numbers. Because there's times when you only get, we only get 40 barrels, which is 1,600 gallons. So just go with a thousand gallons. A thousand gallon costs you ten, nine dollars or eight dollars, whatever you're going to do. Eight dollars would be 24. 24. Eight and a half, a thousand, and have it over. Because it's not fair for uh, somebody filling a, a stock tank that's a thousand gallon, charging three thousand gallons on. You see what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. 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 We had somebody coming the other day and he's got just under a thousand. If they get gallons. under a thousand, it costs you a thousand. It costs you a thousand. It's the other way. Yeah. I agree with that. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. So we just make a flat rate. Okay. What? I would throw my motion. So I guess we don't really want to need to make a motion on these. So. so we're going to revise the ordinance to eight or nine dollars a gallon, or eight fifty a gallon. A thousand per thousand. Per thousand. Per thousand. Per thousand. Per thousand yeah. I'm sorry. I think the more nine. Is okay. Nine. Yeah. Whatever you got. Nine it works for me. Right. Yeah. That covers what Troy was saying. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I just wanted to cover, since we can't, it's going to be treated water. We right. at least need to cover the cost of that. Yeah, we need to cover the cost of that. Yeah. So. It's going to be treated water. No matter yeah. if it's running through that plant. Right, if, if it's actually treated. I mean, it can run through there and not treat. Right. And then we'll just get rid of the other deal altogether. Understood. I thought the deal was he had to pay back bills. He didn't. The the person that didn't was trying to get utilities on. Yeah. No, he didn't have utilities here at all, so there were no um, bills in arrears. But um, it's just that the home that he was trying to move into and has is known for very high utility bills. Everybody that's ever looked in it. We've got about three places here in town that are like that. When he came in, we told him that. Um, he actually thinks that he's found some wiring that was not done right and is thinking that might have had something to do with it. Um, but since then, okay. he has gotten a letter of guarantee. He paid his water, what would have been his water deposit, um, and then he got a letter of guarantee for the rest of it. So he's on. And it is high, um, but a lot of towns don't have electric, water, sewer, and trash, you know. And so we have to cover those bills when somebody leaves. I will say since we've had this ordinance, we've had a whole lot less problem. We were paying back meter deposits after somebody's final bill twice this time instead of us trying to put them on set off and collect it, you know, so. How friendly does that make us to people who are looking to move into our community? I don't think that makes us very friendly. I mean, I understand if you have a customer, or you have a, if you have a prospective customer that comes in here that may have, has a shady history of paying their utilities, I mean, I can understand that, but somebody who's got a really good uh, history on then they all can the get bills, a so. letter of credit. Okay. And so if they can get a good letter of credit from the last 12 months with no more than I think two, they can have two late payments and no shutoffs. Then we will turn them on with a letter of credit. How big of a deal is that for them to get the? Not hard. Utilities um, companies do it all the time. People call us. Depends on where you're coming from. 
Okay. Because if I had tried to get one from Southern California to send when we moved out here from California, it would have never happened. When, when do we uh, shut them off? We send out the late notices. Um, okay. Say we move in the first. They get 30 days, right? Well, no. We bill from the 15th to the 15th. Okay. So if they move in the first of the month. They get a bill on the next first for 15 days. Okay. And then we'll if they don't pay that, when do they shut off? Not until the 25th of the next month. 25th. Because on the 15th they get a late notice that says they're late. So by then they already have one full bill plus that. So the maximum amount that they could occur would be two full months, right? Unless they happen, if we put them on a payment agreement, if they come in and do a payment agreement, then they could stretch it out one more month. Yeah, but I'm talking about a new family coming in and just moving into a house. Yeah, but if they can't pay their bill and they put it on a payment agreement, which we allow. Okay, but I think the point Bob's trying to make is he's looking at it from the purpose of setting a deposit amount. So if, if the process is they move in on the 1st, they get a bill for the 1st and the 15th and the 1st of the following month. They don't pay that by the 25th of the next month, then we'll shut them off. Or they can do a payment agreement. For how long? Why, why would you do a payment agreement if somebody comes in for the first 15 days and said, I can't pay my bill? We don't have any regulations of when they can have a payment agreement. If they have, if their bills are not in arrears to that point, they're given an opportunity for the payment agreement. And at that point, if they don't do what they're supposed to do on the payment agreement, then we can shut them off. But they'd add another month to it the could. total. Could. If that's where they extend that out to. I mean, we try to get, I mean, and we don't usually let them do the whole thing. You know, they have to pay something. But. Well, I think it would be better to do away with the payment plan and reduce the, the, uh, deposit, and if they don't pay the bill, shut them off, period. <laughs> we have a lot of people that do a payment agreement because if they have a medical bill come up, we have people all the time that have been here for many years that sometimes something comes up and they can't pay their bill that time. Okay, but again, I think you guys are talking about two different things. You're talking about an established customer. Well, I'm talking but about he's talking about our regulations does not determine between an established customer or a new customer. So, it so if we like offer it for one, we're going to have to offer it for all. Or we're going to have to write an ordinance or a policy that says if you haven't been an established resident for six months, you're not eligible for a payment plan. Or three months or whatever you guys decide on. But we do have the option to do that so long as we spell it out to the people when they come in and set their utilities up. Well, you know, I've seen some instances here where it takes you $600 to get electricity turned on in the house. Electricity, water, sewer, and trash. Exactly. Maybe even more than that. I can't remember. It seems like, well, I mean, like 900 or something. That, that's kind of what you're talking about. But what, what I'm getting at is by the time you get a deposit for rent, and you get your deposit made up here on your utilities, you can't afford to move here. But Bobby, you're one of the first one that screams every time I show you our delinquents list. I am, exactly. But the fact of the matter is that there's no new hype, new people on there. Well, yeah, that's right. Some of them are in agreements and some of them just consistently pay late. Exactly. But that's but part all, of they're, they're, they're on a payment plan. Not all of them, but some of them. Well, then if they're not on a payment plan, why aren't you shutting them off? Because this is this is ran on the fifteenth when they become delinquent. Right. I do have. A, a, I just showed um, Julianne a list of what we're doing, and I talked to Vicki Dryling so that you guys can see at the cutoff time when we shut people off, and then those people that always pay late with their penalty, you know, which is part of our ordinance. They can do that. Um, they're always on that list, even though 
they paid their bill last month. They just paid it after that list was run and after the penalties were put on. So the delinquency list doesn't exactly show you what you're wanting to do. That's why I worked out another list for you guys to look at. And I ran it past Piggy Dryling and she said, that's fine. That's, you know, if we want to go to start using that. It's two pages. It shows the people that are on payment agreement, um, those that might have penalties that they just didn't pay the penalty. So we're not shutting them off for $15 penalty, you know, because they just didn't pay that this time because they paid off the bill instead of the card or something like that. And then it shows the ones that were shut off. You're saying that if it's due on the 15th of this month and they don't and it's they haven't paid it, when do they actually get shut off? The 25th of this month? Yes. They get 10 days basically. After we send the late card, they get until the 25th. And then we, we, I call, I try to call if I have a good phone number. I try to Facebook people, you know, just because it, Mel doesn't have, you know, those guys go out and have to spend all day shutting them off and they can all day turning them all back on. Um, if we can get them to come in and pay before they get shut off, then they don't have the reconnect fees. So. You, know, you already got somebody who's not able to pay their bill, and then you're going to charge another $25, $50, depending on what time of the day they finally get home and find it. So we try. I spend at least a full morning contacting people before we shut them off. I would, I'm, I would be in favor of something like what Bob's talking about, lowering this. But I don't think you ought to, I mean, it's at three months now. They can stretch it as far as two months, so I don't think you should be under two months. But do a two-month average and then make it to where somebody new can't get on a payment plan. Whatever, you know, whether that's a three or six month probation period or whatever you want to call it. To me, it at least ought to be six. And if they've got a letter of credit, well, they don't have to. Yeah, right, they right. don't have to. Right. right. The the uh, instance that was given to me was if if somebody come to town come to town and wanted to move into a house and just had got a divorce and all of the utility bills was in the husband or the wife's name and the other one was wanting to rent a house they couldn't get a letter of credit because they had nothing in their name. Right. That was the instance. Of and people, well, I don't you know, know. I, unfortunately, people aren't educated on how to set up utilities and stuff like that. Just, you know, I mean, that's something folks ought to learn so that they are established, whether it's in their own name or your. What do you think? Well, I'm Kevin, what do you think? You work with this indirectly all the time. I'm curious, I have a payment agreement, and I make that minimum payment agreement payment, but then I miss, I didn't get to pay anything on my next 30 days, current. Oh, no, you have to pay your current. Now, I'll work with them some if they can't get okay. all of their payment done, but they have to pay their current. Okay, so I, I, okay, I make my minimum payment, and I don't make any on my current. Then you're shut off. What is, the, uh, what is the very minimum payment that, that the customers can give? I mean, is there a set minimum? No, there okay. isn't. And when we um, we have some that I inherited that were not paying their bills at all, so my main goal at that time was to get them paying their bills consistently and working with them with their the income that they have plus ten dollars a month. They are still doing that, and we're slowly getting rid of that. There's not. Charging an interest on that. They get on their penalty if they don't pay their current. You know. Right. Well, I'm saying on the unpaid balance. No, on they the get paid. List, no, they pay. Anything. They pay their penalty when they first had the bill of 10 percent. So they paid it up front. Yeah, but some of them delinquents have been on here since I've been on the board. But for every bill that is in their past due amount, they got penalized for that. But that's a one-time deal. 
know, if I borrow money at the bank, it's going to cost me every year. So, John, say they're behind a thousand dollars, and their bill is three hundred dollars a month. Well, their current bill is three hundred. So every month they have to pay you three hundred ten dollars. On those few, we try to get more than that. Right. I mean, that. But I mean, I'm just I saying they can't get any further. No, okay. no, they have to continue to pay their current. Okay. You know, if they come in and say it's going to be tomorrow, yeah. I'm going to do that. You know, I, I don't say, no, this is our ordinance and this is all we're going to do. But if they don't come in when they say they're going to come in tomorrow, well then, you can, know. Can we set, can we do an ordinance to where we set that? What it has to be of a certain percentage? Of, I mean, it's like $1,000 and you you're take? charging them $10 a month. Well, I, those we're, are we're going to be out here for a lot of years waiting to get that money, and that's what I'm saying. You're charging them one time deal of 10%. And they have a $300 deal. In bill, my own business, pay, in my own business it's about 1.8% per month. Which I, I really can't that, do that. Troy. And but, for those that I didn't inherit, you know, with the larger bills that we're still trying to work off. They don't go that long. Well, I, I just, man, I can't. I'm trying to figure out something that would be fair for the person coming here, plus to never see any of these big bills. Well, that's, yeah. Right. But we can't change what you inherit. I know, right. and we continue to try to work with them. So in two months, they're going to be shut off, right? If they haven't, if, if they haven't paid, they're shut yeah. off. Yeah. Uh, why are we giving them an extra month? Because it's not past due until the 15th. Because when we bill, okay, the guys read the meters on the 15th. Right. It's a long process to get that bill out because we do so much of it manually. It takes Donna two weeks to get the bills ready to, to go out. Okay. And sometimes she has to work overtime to do it. So then they go out, then they, it's due on the 15th. They have two weeks to pay it. Then we send the late part, gives them 10 more days, and then they get shut off. So by the time you read it, and then it's past due, it's time to read the meters again. So, so actually, theoretically, you have two months and 10 days. Theoretically. If every meter in the city was active, how many meters are there? by far the electric bills are unless somebody's had a water leak now that our rates are higher. You know, and if they have a water leak and they don't find out until we do the readings and somebody calls and says, you used a lot of water and they go, I don't know where it's gone. Well, down the toilet, dripping on your faucet. Um, then, you know, they have a sizable bill, a couple of hundred, maybe three hundred dollars worth of water bill that we would have to work with. What would it cost to retrofit everything to radio read? We'd have to get a price. What's that? So, go ahead. I mean, the only thing that would do, I mean, as far as the reading, you know, you could do that you know, pretty much instantaneous, but depending on what system you're working with, whether you did drive by or whatever. And then you should be able to tap it into the computer yeah, system. Yeah, you could have everything loaded and it would go in a lot quicker. So that, that part would save a lot of time. I would say it would probably say probably 10 days of, of manually if they just don't, if they work right. Plus your guys read. Yeah. Oh yeah. John, in your mind, what's the most expensive water bill that we've had due to a water bill? Somebody's away, and 
they have a bike break or something. I mean, there are can other you, circumstances. Uh, you, can you check that out and let me know? I can I'd like to see know what how we can figure out. Bill. You only wanted to go back as far as what we did, raise the price yeah. of water. Right. In January. And where Donna works in it all the time, she may recall the time that we had that situation.
you'd be looking at $475 for a deposit for somebody to move into a house. And I think most people could do that. And I think that would cover us for two months' bill unless somebody's doing something illegal or they're walking into something with a pipe burst and they don't realize it. And again, those are going to be unique situations for the average person. I think something like this might be a better way to go than a three months average. And that's just that my thought. How does that compare with the average of the three months average? It just depends. I mean, I don't, I'm looking at mine here. That would maybe even be, that'd be about what I use. For a month? For, for three months if you yeah. did exactly what you just said. Um, I think that's going to make us a more attractive place for people to move into. It's a set amount, so staff doesn't have to waste time going back and calculating averages. And then we just have to stay diligent. And, you know, you've just moved to town, you don't pay that first 15-day bill or that first 30-day bill, you're shut off at the next shut-off date, period. Unless it's winter and you can't shut the heat off. No, we're off. not under that. Um, the other thing that always comes up is can we take, make payments on our deposit? You know, like the gas bill, I guess you can. You know, they just take it, they just add it to your bill. Um, I don't know if it does here, but when Kendra moved to into a house, she called with her bills, and I went, why, why is your gas that high? Oh, that's still my deposit, you know. Um, so, um, but to me, what's the point of having deposit if you only have a third of it or half of it if they can be gone you see what I'm saying for a typical property in town and I and I know this is going to be a huge <laughs> averaging estimating kind of thing but for a typical typical property in town what would a three-month deposit be if there is, a, I don't know how you can just do a typical, I guess we could take everybody's bills and average them. Okay, no, that's not what I'm asking you. I'm not asking you from the standpoint of setting up the rate. What I'm asking you is, you guys work with this stuff. No, Donna works Donna with this stuff all the time. Okay. <laughs> so, I can't tell you off the top of my head what a typical bill would be. I, I guess I wouldn't be opposed to uh, letting her make a payment like half when they sign up and the other half after their first bill. Or like where you're gonna 10 days or a week. You where know, you're going to say, that. you know, if you're late on your next, on your first bill, we're shutting you off anyway. So. So you're not going to go to the 25th on their first bill? However you got to do it. Because it's yeah. six weeks. Yeah. But I mean, you're not going to offer them a payment plan is what I'm saying. For a new for right. a new person, so I guess I'm not opposed to saying, if just for easy math, it's the deposit's yeah. 500 bucks. So when you you're going to pay me 250 today, we'll get you turned on. You're going to pay me the other 250 the next bill, and that way, I mean, you're you're going to pretty well get it covered. And if they don't pay the next part of it, shut off. it's as much as a shut off as you're if right. they didn't pay their bill. Right. At least you have the 250. Yeah, I mean, you, oh, you're yeah. somewhat covered, but that does give them a break. Mm -hmm. Say, like you said, somebody's divorced and they ain't got a lot of cash, and this and that. I mean, anybody that, moving, that would, it costs a lot to move. Yeah. This costs a lot. That, that would make it somewhat more friendly for somebody moving in. I agree. I think that if you split it in half, it'd be a little bit more easier for somebody to absorb right off the bat when they're coming in here. But still protect us, yeah, for the most part. On the other hand, currently it is not possible to get electric, get your utilities hooked up. You can have a, any person that has credit here at the city sign a piece of paper that says they're going to pay it for a year. You can borrow the money from the bank and you can get your utility bills from other cities here. 
Letter of credit. Letter of credit. And it was put that way, and it seemed to be working. <clears throat> I think it's a deterrent, but it's it's to run the business, so it's for. It's not terrible. I mean, it's bad, but it's not terrible. So you I've, I've signed one thing. Yeah, I've signed several for hard men. They just moved to town. I got out of college. Man, it's gonna cost us here. I'll sign it. Okay, but what no. happens if you're somebody like we were? No. You make a choice to move to St. John because you're looking for a better way of life. You can't get a letter from, or say somebody's gotten a recent divorce. Utilities were in the other spouse's name. They're working in Great Bend. They don't know anybody here in town, but they want to come to town and buy a house. But we're not willing, but our, our utility deposit is so out of line for them that they can't handle it. They're going to move to Great Bend instead. Well, I'd like to see their policy. Well, they don't have all the utilities that we have. That's true. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, and you, know and you, get, you get the money others. back. Yeah. You get well, all yeah. that money back. Yeah. You well, it's not like it's. You have to give them the money. I mean, you, you get it back with interest. A year later, yeah. after 12 months of good. Well, as far as it being a business, you're still protecting yourself with the 250 up front. Yeah. You're just being somewhat nice and saying, I'm going to give you a little bit of trust that this is going to work. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's See, the thing about but it is. What I'm saying is that 250 is still. Pretty much protects us. I mean, if they rack up great big bills, no, it ain't going to. But bro, I see, I like the if somebody's trying to buy a house, it, that ain't going to happen anyway. Right. It's a renting situation. It, to me, that we would run into a situation like that. There's there's some of these houses in the summertime, Kevin. It's probably six seven hundred dollars a month and covered. Oh yeah. You take a six seven hundred dollars a month and in three months. And then there's there are folks that um, heat with electricity, that don't have gas on. You know, those are really outrageous bills. I don't know. I don't have any answers, but I'd like to try to figure out something to kind of make it a little more attractive. I think. Well, what do you guys think about the 500? I mean, she said 475, but just rounding up. Yeah, I, I to got go to 500. And you don't offer as, as just a base, unless somebody says, "Well, man, I really don't." Have as a base deposit for anybody moving in, they pay two fifty up front when you when to get turned on. The following bill, the other two fifty be added to it, and it, you give them a probation period of say six months, or take it clear to the end of the year where they get their deposit back. At that point, you'd be eligible for a. If something would happen, then we would allow them to do the payment plan or whatever. I mean, that way you'd have a full year's worth of history on them. They're getting their deposit back anyway. Does that sound doable? Unfair? I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I think so. I think what, what you were saying just a moment ago, you know, if they come in, if they have that whole money, the whole 500 to put down, fine. We don't need to mention that they can still need to put only half of that down. But if they ask, well, okay, two fifty. Right. And I agree. I think that I think that makes it a lot more attractive for people perspective. But like I said, from still from the business side, we're still protecting ourselves. Because mm -hmm. I agree, I mean it needs to be ran like a business. What do you think, Billion? I think you guys are on the right track. I think that it will make it easier for people to consider moving to St. John. It will keep our community viable, and yet it protects us. And it is twice as much as what we had for a straight, straight across deposit before we went to this average here. How is so, the five? Well, you don't know that. Now, and, and the $500 may be more than some would have averaged out on this other one. Yeah, because my electric bill, highest bill I paid is $140. Mm -hmm. 
have a chair over there. I'm never I mean, there. It, it, exactly. It's, and the that's family's going to be a lot more. Yeah. It's not fair for somebody that's never home, like somebody's driving a truck or something, to be scheduled on this three month deal if he moves into a house and a whole family left. You see what I'm saying? Because he ain't going to use no electricity. Right. Well, this, like I said, this would be non discriminating, so to speak. Yeah, straight yeah, across yeah, the board. This is how we're going to do it. for everyone, yeah. And it's not going to be. I guess that, Joel. And like you said, it's not going to be based on like this guy moving, trying to do what he's doing, and then getting hammered because of what's been done in the past. Right. He's not getting hurt for somebody else's issues. What do you think, Mel? Yeah, I think that's reasonable. I mean, you're not going to let it get out of hand, yeah. and you're giving somebody a chance. So. And that's where it was when we adopted this. Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah. So it was like John said, it was so low. low. It didn't cover right. the one month. But uh, I would, I would, to me, I would like to carry that probation period till they, till the full year. So no agreement until one. No year. agreement right. until after twelve months of service here. Of good payment history. Right, right. You know, in that within that year, you know, when hiccups happen, what if they have a, let's say, a medical emergency and they can't? I mean, is that going to count against them? Do we give them maybe one? Or two chances. I mean, I don't think so. or nothing at all. No, I don't think so. Anymore. Okay. No, I, just, I, I mean, does Ford Motor Credit do it for you? Or no, 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 absolutely. Yeah. You don't make I mean, payment to come well, position. You, you got to yeah, look at the, it as a business. The only yeah. thing that we can do is if somebody is in this position and you know we can't make it that I, you know, I've always when it's to the end of my authority, it's nice to have you guys as my backup. That is the end of my authority. I can't do anything. Else, so you can come before the council. And that probation and period even goes for people that get credit or whatever. They have a line of credit. Yeah, but move, move any chance. So nobody, whoever, no, no new service, whoever, no any new service, service cannot no get matter payment. how they get it, okay. cannot be on that payment plan for a year. That's a good idea. Actually, any new service shouldn't be a payment plan at all. For me. Well, that's what I'm saying. Just carry that to a year. And because you're just asking, you know, if you schedule a parent payment plan, you're just giving somebody out not to pay the bill. Yeah. If you get cut off, you're going to be a little more apt to pay the bill. And, and I mean, it's something we probably, I would like to see us talk about, too, is that delinquent list. Well, that's like what I'm I said, saying. If, if we're getting to the point... This is the new one I want you to look at, because that's what I think you are looking more... To see. Say somebody owes, say somebody on here is 150 bucks, and their payment. You, they come in and talk to you about a payment plan. What are you going to tell them? Their minimum payment needs to be. On? I would suggest that they pay an extra fifty dollars a month. So it would be two hundred dollars a month. Well, no, whatever their current bill is, plus, plus fifty. 50. Which is basically what he just said. What he's yeah. saying is that their bill was 150 and oh, that's their average right. month bill. But most of the time it's it runs all over the place, so depending on what the weather is. But, but I would just say some of these are high enough that but some of those are the ones we're never going to get paid. Well, yeah. But, never. but, you know, there's some of them that are making $100 a month payments, but their bill was just so high when we got them. Right. But I, I don't well, I mean, if it's if it's taken over a year for them to get off this list, I think we ought to be charging them either fees again or an interest rate or something because you can't do that anywhere else in the world. And I think we kind of maybe have to look at the legalities. Yeah, I was just going to say we'll have to not. check on the legalities of that. I mean, there's nowhere else that you go and and they they let you make payments on something and they're not charging the interest. Well, I mean, no, that money costs us. There's no place that you can get on a payment schedule, and the bill, not, the principal doesn't come down somewhere along the line, and we're not seeing this happen very fast. Yeah, I, I, some of them aren't very fast. And this, I mean, that some of them, are you know, but they're really paying the current, you know, right? But they should be paying their current plus, I think, right. a percentage of that total in that that old bill. Well, that's what it's I'm saying. Right. We, we need to come well, up, to me, I think we need to come, sit down and come up with a with a percentage or whatever. You know, if you come in and you're 
you're over for your late penalties or whatever, we're talking four or five hundred bucks, whatever, it's going to be a certain percentage of that every month, whatever that be. So are you thinking like 25 or 30 percent, or are you taking a lesser amount than that? I mean, uh, what's the time frame you're looking to get it paid off in? Well, I would think if you give somebody, if, if they're going to pay the penalties, which you're saying is 10 percent of their totals. Of their current. Of their current, whatever. If they, if they pay their current by the 15th, they don't get a penalty on that. Right. Right, but anything that goes on that delinquency list should have penalties associated with it. already had penalties put on it, okay. yeah. So to me, that needs to be paid off within a year. Oh, yes. Bare minimum. I mean, and to me, that ought to be even but set on a scale But sometimes you're going to see somebody so on there this month, and it might be three months from now, they might be on there again, but they've paid off their old agreement. Right, but I'm just saying that somehow we need, like I said, if you got somebody that owes $1,000 and they're only paying $10 a month, we're well, never going to get paid. We wouldn't set up a new agreement like that. That was those that I inherited, and, and they weren't even paying their bills. Right, well. So we've got them paying their bills plus 10, and we do have some people in town that that, that is what they can pay. The two that I have, like, actually, the, there's, yeah, there's two that I have like that, and that's what they can pay. Well, like I said, we can't do anything about what you inherited. But. In between now and the next meeting, we'll get Jonah to draft a new ordinance, and I'll do some checking to see what communities in the area are doing as far as deposits. Even if they don't have the same utilities that we do, we can at least get a feel for, okay, they have water, sewer, trash, and this is what they're charging, or they have whatever. Right. So I will do that checking up. So she's going to draw up the ordinance as well, the $500? Well, with the stipulations about. that you gave me, normally legal draws up the ordinances. And so, but I can let okay, him well know. Okay, then you can get with Rod and uh -huh. get that taken care of. And let him know what your stipulations were. And then we can tweak it some more. Once I have something pretty concrete, I can tweak it a little bit, send it to him, let him okay it. And then you guys can vote on it. Kevin, you okay with that? Yeah. Yeah. You know, if, if I hire you to do something and I don't pay my bill, and I hire you to do something else, and I pay that bill that you've done, you never get nothing on the back bill. How, what do you, how do you handle that? We're done. We're done. Exactly. <laughs> that's that's kind of where I'm standing here. You know, we're done. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, some of the names have been on there. And I know there's some of them are the ones you inherited, but some of them are on there all the time. But and, and on this one, there's some people that pay late every right. month, you know, and so that's what you were seeing right. all these pages of when it's really not a good reflection of what you. I think that's really what you want to see. Okay. Now I say if there's anybody deceased on this, sure. their name needs to come off. Boy. They should. I'll investigate it. Are we ready to move on to the next item? Yeah. Okay. Uh, sewer rate. And the only reason, you know, we're even talking about this is just that our sewer charges are based on Water usage. Water usage has been going down the last several years. So our sewer charge has also gone down. Our sewer revenue is quite a bit less as you looked at um, the budget. It's still maintaining itself, the sewer fund, but you're, you're uh, transferring $20,000 a year out of the sewer fund to the general fund. If you don't consider raising that rate a little bit, we may not be able to do the transfer, continue to do the transfer every year. But it, it's it, not it something we have to do it's right It's still covering now. itself, plus yeah. a little. Plus, yeah. I mean, this is, I'm just, it's more FYI, you know, but 
Um, it's still a healthy fund, but it's starting to deteriorate, I guess is a good way to put it, because it's not as healthy as it used to be. Kind of know the feeling. <laughs> I guess my thought on that is, is if it's still making money, that we leave it alone. We just keep watching it. Um, we, we already have, we've raided water rates. I, you know, I don't we've have a problem. It's just, I'm doing my due pin, diligence wanna, by letting you guys know. I don't want to sound like a... Right. But hey, maybe you next using year water we might we need to... It, so now we're going to gouge it on the back side. I don't want to do that. The thing yeah. about it is, Troy, we've also got to keep in the back of our mind that we've got some sewer issues coming. Well, I understand it, but it's still making money and we're putting money in. Right. And the last away. time, last but time... But sewer deal, when we start that, will make that nitrate plant look like a walking park. Well, it might, but... I mean, I, I look for that to come in six, seven, five, eight, or six, seven, eight dollars. And that may not do it. Kim, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, he's got a, he also got a videotape to show you if anybody wants to see it. Okay, well, somebody catch me up. Well, we've got some bad sewer lines in there. Everything's aging. But we already have how much money we have in that fund. The sewer replacement fund? Yes. Sewer And the well, last time you did raise the rates for the sewer was in 05, so. But what, what I'm saying is we're taking 20000 out of the gym, out of this every year. And and the general general fund. Fund. So you can, we not raise can we not allocate more of that money from the general fund into the sewer replacement? And that way this system is paying for itself? You can, then you're going to have to do something with the general fund. You're going to have to make up that 20000 somewhere. We've got a lot of money coming out of Jericho from this nitrogen. Right. Year. I mean, I just, to me, I mean, I, mean, we can watch I, I, I can tell you what the general consensus of this town is going to yeah. be. Right. Oh, I can too. <laughs> I mean, if we're the back, they think we gouged them on the front side and they, they quit using water now because our sewer rates <laughs> could be even but it, it, I guarantee you what the coffee shop deal is going to sound like. That started way before. I sat right here and told everybody we can't afford this. Well, that's still that's debatable. Here, but, there, at this point. They said that's neither here nor there at yeah. this point. We did it. Well, but, but okay, I, what so I'm saying is, is it's still making money. Okay. <laughs> this side of it is still making money. Yes, it Let's is. leave it alone for right now. Okay. It's my consensus. Well, that's, you guys are your own deal. But to me, I'd say let's so maybe. take some heat off. <laughs> let's take some heat off the back side, so to speak. I want to say it's 3,000. So, I mean, it's pretty. I mean, does it make. 
is it reasonable to say that, I mean, we're talking the in the city, not out in the country? Right. Well, I'm just That's, saying. To me, it'd be different. Right. I'm just saying, it probably, you know, if, 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 when you get into the area of seven, we're, we're going to disagree or get off with your statutes that are already there. Yeah, here's the Then whether or not. That's just something to consider. I mean, I don't care. I, I think if they've got lights on, turn signals, and everything works, then why not? So, is the 3,000 foot statute right now apply to the ATVs and utility vehicles that are running around town after dark? It should, but like, again, you know, in my experience, your, your, your ATVs and all that sit a lot higher off the ground, which is going to allow that meeting to there's that far. Are the ATVs allowed to run after dark? Yeah, like your the your, utility, the, uh, the sport little, the, utility vehicles. The, is that the, what they're called? Yeah, the, the worksite utility trucks, yeah. and then your razors and stuff that fall in that same ordinance. Really? Because they don't have turn signals. Well, yeah, I mean they have to have turn signals on to to, to run after dark. Oh, okay. Yeah. But that was again one of those things that was kind of a catch twenty two when you when we put the. Utility vehicles in with the works like utility trucks. Okay. Also, Julian, can we look at the ordinance too on the uh, getting the license for it? Can we go with something like the uh, county does for the razors and all that? It's $50 one time thing. We do those here. The razors. Yes, one time they do. Okay, but what about like the gators and all that? Okay, okay but so why, is it, why is it different? It's for, because. For the city made two different ordinances with oh, the wow. two. Okay, so then I guess what I'm hearing from the council is that we'd like for the golf carts to be set up the same way as the work or utility vehicles. Well, the reason they did that is because by state statute, golf carts are not allowed. They, the, and the razors were added into the same category, I should say, as the worksite utility trucks because they met the same weight requirements, dimensions, um, you could have them set up to where they could have actual doors, make the enclosed space inside. So the, the reason they're set apart is because, you're, like I said, your golf carts and all that are in a completely different category in the vehicle classifications than what your work site is. Okay, well, set up a separate ordinance, but make it so that the registration is the same. the same as the other. Since they have a separate deal, just put it all as one. He just told you why. Yeah. Why? Well, yeah. Still doesn't make any sense. Yeah. We can get it to something similar to that. It's all right. That's a call card for St. John. So right. down around that you can do this. That's if you can. Hudson, you probably Hudson, don't even need any part of your license. <laughs> There's a lot of things you can do in Hudson you can't do nowhere else. Well, that's true. That's why it's a little unique. That's little the little reason you're from Hudson. <laughs> 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 Thanks. Okay. Is there any other uh -huh. little business we need to discuss? I'd right. make a motion to adjourn it. Second. All in favor, right hand. Opposed? My other right. Adjourn. Sure.